welcome back to the uh, SC100 course. This is a free course on YouTube. Um, and we are going to dive into the Microsoft Defender for Cloud. All right, so what we're talking about with Microsoft Defender for Cloud, basically what it does is help strengthen your cloud security posture and workload protection. Okay, so what is Microsoft Defender for Cloud? So it is a cloud native application protection platform, CNAP. It also provides a cloud security posture management um, and then you also delivers workload protection and then it supports a hybrid and multi-cloud environment. So you can use it for on-prem services as well. So let's talk about some of the key capabilities. So security posture visibility across cloud workloads, uh, hardening recommendations based on security benchmarks, threat protection for uh, IaaS, PaaS and containers and then DevSecOps integration for your CI CD pipeline. So a lot of organizations will use it for a security uh, posture management because what it is doing is gonna continually watch and observe your resources in the cloud. Because it's very easy to set up resources in the cloud and have them misconfigured. You might have a storage account that might be public accessible. Uh, you may have a VM that has a public IP address that allows RDP into it. There's a lot of different things that you can do in your organization and everyone has different levels of their knowledge of the cloud, right? Just like any other thing in life. The thing is, if you have resources that are deployed that you aren't even aware of, they may cause a breach. So if you have a VM that has a public IP address and it has an RDP for the network security groups that anyone can access it, now guess what happens? Now you run into a situation where you can get hacked, that VM can be compromised, and then now, now that in your internal network, guess what, now they can go rogue. So this is why it's so important to have a tool such as Defender for Cloud in your organization. So some of the supported environments is Microsoft Azure. Obviously it's a native tool. You can also use a connector uh, for Amazon Web Services. So a connector is this, basically what it says, it connects to that uh, other tenant that you have if you are a multi-cloud organization such as you know you have uh, Azure but then you also have AWS or you may have GCP you could connect in it you would have to set up some configurations have a account like a service principal account or a service account so that this way you could connect into that organization and that uh, tool the CSPM uh, Microsoft Defender can now look at your resources in that uh, um, tenant right and it can now say okay what's going right what's wrong over here and then now you have observability across all cloud platforms and then at last is on-premise services using azure arc so i've been talking a lot about cspm cloud security posture management because that is going to be on the test so what it does is a continuous assessment of cloud resources provides a secure score identifies misconfigurations and rec re recommends remediation steps. So we are gonna go through that in later videos where we're gonna show you exactly, I'm gonna show you, excuse me, uh, I'm gonna show you how the secure score looks. My secure score may not look that great, but it is a lab environment, so please keep that in mind. Um, or it might really be good. I'm, I haven't gone into the Azure 10 and looked at that in a little while, but I don't have a lot of resources, but I'm still gonna show you exactly how you can do it. And then as you're following along with the video, guess what? You can now go and look in your environment and see exactly what's going on. And then one of the major things that it does is identifies misconfigurations. That is huge. So if you have these misconfigurations, guess what? It's going to also say, okay, this is how you fix it. So for instance, you have a VM that's a public IP address, then you would say, okay, well, you can have a policy that disallows public IP addresses, and we're gonna go through policies as well in this course, but you would have a policy that disallows public IP addresses, or this way that won't happen. So if anybody tries to deploy a public IP address and associate it with a VM, it won't be allowed, but you would have to do something that's more secure, like setting up a bastion host, or even if you wanted to allow it, you would now have to make sure that the network security groups are established in a way that you only are allowing access from your specific IP address range that may be a part of your corporate environment. Then there's also cloud workload protection. Uh, as real-time threat protection covers resources like virtual machines, app services, containers, SQL databases, and storage accounts. So all your workloads will be able to be managed and look and see what any, any uh, bad configurations are happening there. And I mentioned storage accounts um, as one example 
Uh, so your storage accounts, you would have, you have firewall rules in your storage account. Storage accounts are one of those resources that are globally unique, right? So the, the name has to be unique because it is something that is uh, not really contained within your tenant, but it is global service. So for that reason, you would want to make sure that not everybody has access. So if you're sending logs to a storage account, you don't want everybody seeing your logs because your logs can now have what? Virtual machine information, IP information, passwords, so on and so forth, depending on where the logs are coming from. That is proprietary data. That is stuff that you do not want out there. Plus, you can run into some type of compliance issue uh, if that happens or you get fined because guess what? Now you have leaked out customer information and you're going to have a hefty fine. So what your workload protection is going to do is now look at this information uh, associated with your storage account and it's going to say, okay, hey, this is bad. You need to now have a different firewall rule. And now your firewall rule may allow access only from certain IP address ranges or you can now do something like a private link that this way, the only way you would be able to communicate with the storage account is through that private link. Even more to that is where you can now make sure that authentication to the storage account is associated with Microsoft Entra. That is another thing that it would bring up to you and say, hey, this is incorrect, or you have you know, uh, SAS keys associated with it, so that's your storage access keys. Um, you may have it uh, too, um, it's not uh, restrictive enough as well. So these are the kind of things that your their, uh, CSPM is going to let you know about. Um, if, if there is anything that I just mentioned, I know I talked a lot about certain uh, uh, indicators that your CSPM is going to let you know about, your cloud security posture management tool, Defender for Cloud, is going to let you know about, but it would probably make more sense as we go along in the course because everything I'm talking about, I'm going to show in later on subsequent videos. So there is a, a big plan when it comes to Defender for Plan overview. Uh, so there is a lot of versions of Defender. So I don't make the names. I just kind of just try to learn it as much as possible. But even I get confused as well when it comes to Defender for Plan because Microsoft is constantly changing names. That is something that you're just going to have to get used to. Uh, so there is Defender for Servers. It protects VMs, hybrid servers. Defender for App Services. It defends web apps. Defender for Containers. That's for you know Kubernetes services. There is Defender for SQL storage, so on and so forth. So they have different flavors of Defender, um, and the, depending on the flavor is what its job responsibility is. Also, what we haven't talked about is integration with DevSecOps. So if you are in the cloud space, getting into cybersecurity or learning, if you Google uh, any job like a cloud solutions architect or any job you know in the cloud, a lot of times what you're gonna see is things like Terraform and Ansible. And what those are is uh, automation tools so that this way you don't have to be so click ops in your environment. So a lot of us, when we first start in the cloud, now pretty much all of us, I would say, is we go into the Azure portal or we go into AWS or whatever cloud you're in, GCP, and you are clicking around and going in. So you're going into virtual machines, you're doing identities, things of that nature. What you're going to be doing with DevSecOps is the software development life cycle. So instead of you doing click ops, you would now have code that you can now run in your environment where it would say, okay, I want to have 10 VMs set up or 10 storage accounts or whatever the case may be. And then you have some automation there where you don't have to write as much, but now you dictate what you want through code and it would automate it instead of saying VM01, it would say VM01, two, three, four, five, and you're not writing all the code out um, uh, specifically. Now, what this is going to do with DevSecOps, it, it detects insecure code configurations. So if you have code that is going to give you a gap or leave you open for a security gap, it's going to identify that. And there are a bunch of different tools that do that. Uh, another tool that is really good in terms of looking over your code and making sure that there is anything wrong with it is you know, things like Wiz. Wiz is a big tool that is a security tool, a security posture management tool that can do the same thing. Um, it works well with GitHub because that is a uh, platform that a lot of developers use. Um, also works well with Azure DevOps. That is a native uh, platform so that you can write your code, you can have your user stories, you can have an agile approach uh, to your workloads with Azure DevOps and you can integrate that with your Defender for Cloud. 
All right. So to wrap us up, what are the benefits of this? So if uh, you haven't gotten the benefits so far from what I've spoken about, uh, it's a unified security management. We don't want to have to go through one tool and another tool and another tool. You don't want to do that. You want to make sure that you can uh, you can look at all of your resources, whether you are in AWS, Azure, and GCP. Now, all of those tools have their own security tools with them, but imagine having to go and open up a window for you know, uh, AWS is a uh, cloud security uh, tool, right? Um, you wouldn't want to have to go ahead and do that. It just it would be too much. Our AWS config is what they have over for AWS, and then GCP has theirs. With using Defender for Cloud gives you the capability of now seeing everything in your organization, have that full observability. Uh, improves compliance when you can have that full observability. You have compliance and governance is being improved. You also have the threat detection and response. So now how do we respond to these situations and how do we rectify them? The tool is letting us know how we rectify this moving forward. So this way you can have a good plan moving forward uh, for your organization. And then as I mentioned before, it is multi-cloud and hybrid visibility. So uh, that wraps up for this video. What we are going to jump into next is going to actually open up the Azure portal and we're going to go and actually look and see how Defender for Cloud looks and how we can set things up in the Defender for Cloud and kind of just walk through the environment for you. So I want to thank you for watching this video. If you haven't done so already, please smash that like and subscribe button here at Cloud Scholars. My goal is to get you from scholar to consultant and of course, consultant to expert. Thank you and see you next time.